Mr. Speaker, you know, um, when I came in this morning, there were members opposite who was indicating to me I have nothing to say this morning, you know. I should I should try it. And, and I, I, I recognize a sort of a game of, of, of chess this morning as to whether I would speak, Mr. Speaker. But, um, Mr. Speaker, I would like to share a few words on the motion. But before that, if you will permit, I would just like to express my deepest condolences to a colleague, a former colleague, Norbert Williams, who passed um, um, night before, Mr. Speaker. Um, and um, I wish to express condolences to his family and his loved ones, Mr. Speaker. He was the attache to the former Prime Minister. Um, Mr. Speaker, I should also, you know, indicate, you know, and, and, and lament, you know, various things that have been you know, spouted over social media, which is rather unfortunate, Mr. Speaker, in our society that some people would want to, you know, to celebrate the death of, because we never know when our number will be called, Mr. Speaker, and despite political differences, Mr. Speaker, you know, um, you know, we should, we should really and truly recognize, you know, life and death, Mr. Speaker. Um, Mr. Speaker, while I'm on the floor, I would also want to take the opportunity while it not be, be directly related to the motion. But I think it's important, not just for me, but for every member in parliament, you know, to make a contribution with regard to the scourge as it um, regards to the crime situation, Mr. Speaker. Um, and so, Mr. Speaker, I want to, first of all, applaud the Commissioner of Police for her press conference. I think it was yesterday or a day before, Mr. Speaker, um, you know, really, really um, sending a strong message out there, Mr. Speaker. Likewise, the Prime Minister, um, in his address, Mr. Speaker, um, although I, I, I did feel he, he should have um, instilled the fear of God, you know, in, 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 in some of the people out there. But, Mr. Speaker, it is very clear that we as parliamentarians, you know, have to speak, Mr. Speaker. And, Mr. Speaker, I, there may be a respite, Mr. Speaker, um, based on, you know, the words from the Commissioner, the words from the Prime Minister, but the, the, the point is, Mr. Speaker, we have very, very highly sophisticated guns on the island. And what our intention should be is to get these guns off the street, Mr. Speaker. I was very happy that the Prime Minister spoke to the reintroduction of the K-9 unit. Slightly disappointed, Mr. Prime Minister, that you wanted to juxtapose the reason for introducing the K-9 was because of the scanners. I, I, I don't think that was um, necessary to, to, to indicate. But I commend, I commend that, Mr. Speaker, it's very important, you know, that we try to take these guns off the street, Mr. Speaker, um, because when I, when I see some of what is being, you know, um, shown on social media, it is very scary. The point is, Mr. Speaker, how are the guns coming in? Are there people facilitating the importation of these, these, these guns through our various um, um, borders, Mr. Speaker? But at the end of the day, we must all be speaking with one voice as it relates to getting rid of this skirt, Mr. Speaker, because we never know when it will be on our doorstep, Mr. Speaker. So I thought it was necessary, Mr. Speaker, to speak to the whole issue of crime. And, and, and as a parliament, we must speak with one voice in terms of ensuring that you know, we, cut, we cut the head, we cut the tail, we cut the body, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'm, I'm on record consistently in this parliament to indicate that a government must borrow. I'm on record. It is necessary, it is a necessary evil, if you could use that expression, for governments to borrow. I'm also on record, Mr. Speaker, for wanting this government to do well, Mr. Speaker. I have said that because, Mr. Speaker, if this government do well, our people supposedly benefit, our communities benefit, and the country as a whole benefits, Mr. Speaker. And so, you know, it is very important when we in opposition, Mr. Speaker, we mind our words, because sometimes these words could come back to haunt us when we're in office, Mr. Speaker. There's a saying, heavy is the head that wears the crown, Mr. Speaker. And each one of us here have a crown that we wear, we wear a heavy crown. In fact, the Prime Minister has the heaviest crown. In fact, only this morning I heard a member for Central Castry speaking to a colleague across the room as to the toll being in government takes on him as a parliamentarian 
and Mr. Speaker, <laughs> Mr. Speaker, and you know he, he he's not he's not 100% this morning, Mr. Speaker. Um, but it's a fact, Mr. Speaker. When you are a parliamentarian, when you're a government minister, there's a significant pressure on you, Mr. Speaker. And you have, Mr. Speaker, because all of us, I believe most, maybe 99% of us who come into politics, who come, into, come for the benefit of our community and our people. Some may come in with ulterior motives, and some along the way, Mr. Speaker, may get caught up in, you know, um, it, it being dragged in the wrong direction, Mr. Speaker. But I believe everybody who comes into politics come for the benefit of the people. And so, Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister has that heavy crown, has that heavy crown to wear. And obviously he has to, to, to look at ways in which, you know, he can improve the lives of St. Lucians, particularly the vulnerable, you know, Mr. Speaker, and you heard the Prime Minister with regards to the borrowing. The Prime Minister indicated that today we're borrowing almost $280 million for budget support. And Mr. Speaker, I would remember, and as I said, Mr. Speaker, borrowing is necessary. What we, or we, what I might do on this side is to question what the borrowing is for. But I will never, you know, um, I, I, I'm, I'm speak against borrowing. That's on record, Mr. Speaker. But the Prime Minister spoke this morning with regards to the amount that he's borrowing and for the various reasons that he's borrowing, Mr. Speaker. And I'm hoping that the Prime Minister in his rebuttal could advise me um, as to whether, because, you know, my memory is sometimes waning, you know, um, as to whether these funds are funds that were previously on the books or negotiated by the former administration and they're now being either repurposed or, but because I remember there was a similar amount, you know, um, negotiated with the, the government of, of, of Taiwan, Mr. Speaker. So I, I just want the, the Prime Minister to advise me whether, you know, that is, you know, um, similar facility or, or is that the same facility that has been repurposed, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister spoke to the various purposes, um, as I indicated, budget support. And I remember when we were in government, Mr. Speaker, we borrowed amounts from CDB, the World Bank, um, for similar purposes. But as a government, we were chided. We were, we, there were certain memes as with regards to every Tuesday what we are coming to borrow, Mr. Speaker. Nothing in the region of what we're borrowing here today, Mr. Speaker. But obviously, obviously, Mr. Speaker, you know, an opportunity presented itself, and when in opposition, we spoke about it, Mr. Speaker. The Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker, also spoke that some of the money that are being borrowed will be for land acquisition, um, and he was very careful to indicate that it's not just within the 17 months in, 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 um, in um, office, but you know, he, he, you know, very carefully crafting his words to suggest that that $46 million in, in land acquisition was during the last ad, um, chain of the administration. Um, uh, that's not the case, Mr. Speaker. Um, that goes a lot further than that. Um, and we all know that land acquisition is, is necessary for various public development for the benefit of, of, of the country. But he also spoke, Mr. Speaker, with regards to the 6% rate that has to be um, repaid with regards to the value of the land. when you. And maybe, Mr. Speaker, there's no bank that gives you 6% on your money now. Maybe the timing is right for us to also look at adjusting the interest that we pay. Because land acquisition will continue. It's something that we will have to continue to do as, as governments in terms of um, progressing, in, in terms of um, you know, public, public development for public benefit. I also note, Mr. Speaker, um, that um, you know the the the, mon the, the monies will be will be going to pay for for um, changing our debt profile. And Mr. Speaker, that's nothing different to what we were doing when we were doing in government. We recognise that we have some expensive debts on our books, and we you know we're going ahead to changing them to longer term debts to ensure that the country is not burdened with some. So so there's nothing different in what is being what is being done here today, Mr. Speaker. The the, the, the difference is. 
I, on this side, will not chide the government for the borrowing, Mr. Speaker. But, Mr. Speaker, I want to take the opportunity because in all of that borrowing, you know, there's monies that have um, been allocated to, to various constituencies for various reasons, Mr. Speaker. And, um, Mr. Speaker, I, um, we were at a function last week, it was, and the former Prime Minister, member for Viewford South, made a very particular point, Mr. Speaker, which caught my attention when he said that parliamentary representatives must be given the dignity that they deserve, and they must be given the respect that they deserve as parliamentary representatives. Because, as he indicated, it's not the parliamentary representative that is being affected, but the people that they represent, Mr. Speaker. And, 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 and he was very correct. And you know, Mr. Speaker, when I reflect on what he said, I remember this government in opposition, the six members opposite. One of the things they always said was, you never, as a government, gave us a cent. That's a fact. They continue to say, no, you continue to say, as members of parliamentary representatives representing various constituencies, y'all were never given a cent under the under the, the stimulus, under the, um, what's the other one? The, the, the Taiwanese CDP. That, you said it. You said, Mr. Speaker. And the point is, Mr. Speaker, what the members opposite said at the time was, if, or when, rather, because they were very confident they were coming to government, when they come to government, they will treat every parliamentary representative, as long as you're a parliamentary representative, they will treat you with the dignity that you deserve. They will treat you in the, uh, as a parliamentary representative, Mr. Speaker, and respect the fact that the people have voted for you and you will get the necessary support, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, it's, and as I, I indicated to, to a colleague across the, um, the, 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 the room this morning, as I indicated to a colleague across the room this morning, if it was wrong, then it is still wrong, and I have said that more than, on more than one occasion in this parliament. So, Mr. Speaker, when you look at the community of Shozal Saldivas, one of the largest, second to Grozili, one of the second to Grozili, one of the largest constituencies in St. Lucia, okay? And you would want, Mr. Speaker, to provide this constituency, you know, with an amount to, for Christmas stimulus, cleaning up the road, Mr. Speaker, and taking into consideration the situation in the country right now, cost of living. Everybody's looking for something, Mr. Speaker, everybody. And Mr. Speaker, you would provide me as a parliamentary representative for a certain amount, and you would maybe provide, as the honorable member for Sufre indicated, you know, um, five times the amount to Sufre, Mr. Speaker. Now, Mr. Speaker, sh 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 when you cannot compare sh Shozal and Sufre as it relates to the size, the number of, um, you know, um, people who are affected, Mr. Speaker, you know. Mrs. Mrs. But that's the point, I'm a member, member from Beaufort North. The point is, yes, I got. Yes, I got. But the point is, you said you treat differently. And, and, Mrs. Speaker, when you want to provide funds to my opponent, to, the, to, the, to, to an individual who I, I soundly defeated in the last election, Mr. Speaker, to try to humiliate me, to try to embarrass me, Mr. Speaker, to create political points. That will not work, Mr. Speaker. That will not work. But at the end of the day, what is happening, Mr. Speaker, and I've, and I've told the Honorable Prime Minister that his role as a Prime Minister primarily should be to, 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 to unite the people. Must be, Mr. Speaker. As the Prime Minister, that's his role. So what really should be happening? He should indicate, and I think he has, he, has, he has lost quite a few opportunities in doing that. And, um, and, and there's one, when the time comes, you know, I'll speak about it, Mr. Speaker. But the Prime Minister and the team got a resounding mandate, Mr. Speaker. And really and truly, you know, he should use that mandate to bring our people together. So, Mr. Speaker, I am, I am not... I am not against the borrowing because, as I said, it is necessary, budgetary support, um, 20 years, the, the, the terms and conditions were uh, a, a very favorable, Mr. Speaker. But at the end of the day, my, 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 my principal point that I'd like to leave here today, Mr. Speaker, is that we need to be very careful what we preach to our people. We say one, we say one story when we're in opposition and when we're in government is another story, Mr. Speaker. 
And so, Mr. Speaker, I, I, I promise the member that I would not have been very long today, um, but I suspect I have opened up for quite a few members to speak. Um, <laughs> and um, I thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity.